Welcome back. Minibus operators took to the media to express their dissatisfaction with how the issue of COVID-19 is being dealt with, particularly within the transportation sector. They say they are tired of receiving the short end of the stick and feel like corporate society is being treated much better than they are. Geneve Gonzag reports. The struggle of staying afloat continues for many. Once again, Minibus operators are raising questions as to why they have been handed what they consider the short end of the stick. Drivers are mandated to transport 10 passengers or they risk the chance of being charged and or arrested. One member of the Grand Rapier Minibus Association, Lincoln Kazime, says he feels like the common man is suffering the most during this time. When you watch it, the poor people are getting squeezed through that COVID-19. From since the 16th of March, COVID came around. We have been carrying seven passengers. It went up to nine. It went up to ten all now. So there is members that was owing the bank and our association that had to sell the vehicle to, to, to make up. Check what happened to the fishermen. They shut them down just without no discussion. They just shut down the fishermen. Look right now that we have a case of mass sisters where that they has more they, they carry more people than us. The capacity of people inside of Massey stores is much more than the 10 passengers on our bus. At the end of the day, we've been squeezed. Driver Jeremiah Ariste says this. Driver Jeremiah Ariste says to this day, he believes that the transportation sector, particularly minibus operators, are being scrutinized the hardest. They are carrying 10 passengers, but yet still at the back of the bus is taking free passengers that's no social distancing so right now that i find we bus drivers have to take a step and do something better to stop what's going on right now the mass sisters all in places don't have social distancing you will get more than 25 people inside of one little small store and nothing for that all what this government is doing is squeezing the poor people of St. Lucia. Kazimir says there are many other questions that authorities need to shed light on and he, and he believes that the mistrust in the information being disseminated stems from the lack of clarity and explanation being given to the public. I want the government to answer us that because that's why we St. Lucians now, we have to be questioning the CMO and the government decision because we've seen there is certain things that happening in St. Lucia that's, not, that's really just not right. Like it's the poor people alone not getting squeezed. Minibus operators say the rules should apply to everyone within the society and not a select few. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Geneve Gonzaga. On the 9th of November, members of the National Association of Driving Schools gathered outside the office of the Prime Minister in protest of the lack of consultation before a decision was taken to suspend theory and practical driving exams. More than a week later, the Secretary of the Association says no indication has been given on when exams will recommence. The theory and practical exams of driving schools were suspended almost three weeks ago. On November 9th, scores of driving schools were represented in a protest outside of the Graham Louise Administrative Building to shed light on the lack of consultation on the part of authorities with respect to the decision that was taken. The Secretary of the National Association of Driving School, Kingston Jean, says the association was able to meet with the Prime Minister, Minister for Transport, and other relevant authorities on November 17th. At that meeting, it, it was suggested that we form a committee to discuss protocols concerning driving instructions and practical and theory exams. The Minister of Transport, Mr. Guy Joseph, also said that he's looking into having a bigger room where we could facilitate more persons doing theory exams. It was also suggested that probably should have a tent outside of the Ministry of Transport where we could have those persons do the theory exams or so having the exams indoor but to have it outdoor as well. The minister said that he'll get back to us concerning the, the bigger space to have those three exams done. He has not gone back with us as yet. Jia says, although plans have been made to implement mandatory COVID-19 protocol for driving schools, an end date to the suspension has not been announced. As of now, we free and practical exams still suspended until further notice. And really puts um, students in a 
predicament where as they do not know the way forward as to whether they should continue driving or not. As I stand here today, I'm actually not working today because I have no sense to drive um, because of the they not being certain as to when they could do a free or practical exam. So today is my off day. He says masks face shields and temperature guns have all been provided to all driving instructors. He says another meeting with the chief transport officer is scheduled for Tuesday. Je says an official set of protocol will be sent to the CMO and hopefully that will suffice for the suspension to be lifted. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Geneve Gonzaga. National Security Minister Herman Gil Francis is sending out a warning to citizens as the Christmas season approaches, asking them to take steps to ensure that they are not a target for thieves. Annually, during the Christmas season, the RSLPF records a spike in crimes involving robberies and burglaries. Francis is warning the masses to be wary of the signs. With Christmas quickly approaching, residents have been admonished to safeguard themselves while shopping this holiday season. Yearly, the police force records numerous robberies and burglaries during this time. But with the advent of COVID-19 and more people out of work, it is believed that criminals may be out in full numbers. National Security Minister Herman Go Francis believes that even the wearing of masks places everyone at an even greater risk during this time. With this COVID um, in, um, situation, there is a mandate for persons to be wearing masks. A lot of the criminals are going to be using that subterfuge that um, because they are, they are duty bound to wear the mask, they will wear the mask and, and commit crime. So then there's a difficulty associated with that. I know for some business places that when you do enter those who have the cameras, that they ask you to bring the mask down for a little while so that they can recognize your, your features and then you're asked to put the mask back. So for, so for some shops, um, small shop owners, I think that is a technique that you can use. The minister is deterring shoppers from traveling with large sums of cash. Um, the banks are there, you have your ATM cards and so on. This is ideal to, to be able to pay your, your, your bills. Um, so you have a credit card or a debit card, try to use those um, instruments to pay your bills and, and to do things. So do not work with, with too much cash. I'm happy to know that the bus drivers are now looking at a payless system. It has been bundled around for a long time, but I think the time is ripe for them to do it. Um, when the criminals know that they cannot get any cash, they will not commit the crimes. Francis also cautioned the would-be perpetrators of crime while highlighting that people are taking matters into their own hands. Um, if you notice some of the, the areas in St. Lucia are actually capturing people and, and doing things. Um, we do not really want vigilante um, policing, but at the end of the day, the citizenry must be able to protect themselves. And if that's the way they can do it, they, they need to be able to do it without causing any harm to those criminals that are, are being caught. Francis asserts that most crimes committed during the holidays are crimes of opportunity. For the Hot 7 News, Nisha Charles reporting. The political leader of the St. Lucia Labour Party and opposition leader, Philip J. Pierre, has promised that universal health care will be established by the St. Lucia Labour Party when it gets into office. Pierre says during its last term in government from 2011 to 2016, the SLP had completed extensive studies and planning on the establishment of universal health care in St. Lucia. The crucial element of the universal health care system was the creation of a basket of services, including health insurance, which citizens would have been able to access, with the greater part of the cost of these services being borne by the government. Universal access to health care remains a priority of a Labour government. And we shall continue to process. We started since we were last in office to establish a universal health care system. We believe that accessible and affordable health care is the greatest priority of an SLP government. As part of our health care system, we shall encourage and support healthy lifestyles as a complementary health policy initiative. 
Pierre says the state of healthcare in St. Lucia remains a source of concern and disappointment, in particular the lack of progress at St. Jude Hospital. A Labour government, he says, upon coming into office will waste no time in having St. Jude Hospital completed. This is the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. Stay with us. There's more after the break.